This next video is for loopers and cruisers who are coming up the New Jersey coast into New York Harbor. I'm going to describe some of the areas that I'm familiar with from my years of boating in the New York Harbor and the Hudson River area and the different places you could visit. If you're just quickly going up the loop, you're going to go pretty much north up towards the Hudson River, towards Manhattan Island. But there's a lot more to see before you get that far. My favorite place to go is towards New Jersey and around the inside of Sandy Hook. Sandy Hook is a federal parkland that houses some Coast Guard facilities, but there's a lot of nice beach along the ocean side and pretty deep water on the bay side for anchoring overnight. First point you'll pass is this location here called unofficially Bill's Cove and it is an area just off the main channel that has relatively deep water uh, pretty much up to the beach line just uh, watch your, uh, your depth finder and you could anchor here and pre be pretty secure from uh, most winds from at least the east and the south um, it's a nice place to dinghy up to shore and you're able to walk along the beaches here you'll see plenty of fishermen up this end it's pretty far from parking lots, so it's, it's usually not too crowded except for people who are uh, fishing or taking their boats over. But a really nice beach to spend the day or even an overnight. Uh, you may have to watch out for some wake action from larger ships going through the channel and fast boats, fishing boats come in and out of here quite often. Um, however, uh, during the nighttime it tends to slow down. If you're not that adventurous to be so close to the ocean, a quick ride right around Sandy Hook Point here will bring you into another protected anchorage. Now this here you're protected from the north and east winds, however you're a little exposed from south and west. This anchorage by the Coast Guard Station is a great place to stay overnight. I do not suggest rafting up with other boats as there is some pretty good wakes that come through here that will knock you around a bit. But um, the anchor set pretty well, and uh, we had a nice night and explored the beach line also here with the dinghy. And did some fishing here. One thing to be mindful of when coming around Sandy Hook Point and coming into Sandy Hook Bay, you need to be aware of this area here. This is a Navy munitions depot pier and these waters are all restricted. They are marked by white buoys completely surrounding the pier about a quarter mile away from it and you need to steer far from this area. Do not go on the inside of the white pier, uh, the white buoys. You will be approached by a Navy gunship and they will turn you away at the, uh, at the very least. Um, another thing to look out for are, there's many fish trap areas. They are marked here on the Navionics app. However, um, pretty much anywhere in this area you need to watch out for uh, fish traps. Uh, don't get them caught around your props. Your safest bet is to cut across the middle of the channel and start picking up the buoys if you're going to come into Sandy Hook and Shrewsbury River and the Navasink River. First buoy here is buoy two, Markbury Red Buoy and you follow the channel all the way in. There will be ferry boats coming in and out of here, a lot of pleasure boats, fishing boats, but the channel is well marked. Just make sure you stay in the channel. You can see you have some very shallow water to the north. Now along this inlet into the Navasink and Shrewsbury Rivers, there's several dock and dines, several smaller marinas. Uh, the restaurants are great. Um, there's a couple uh, along the way that I frequent. Uh, here you have the Inlet Cafes, laid back, a smaller restaurant, it does have a small dock, and next to it is the Proving Ground restaurant, it used to be called Wind and Sea. Very popular place, uh, live music, outdoor seating, tiki bar, uh, indoor seating, uh, sports bar. Uh, I, I highly recommend stopping here if you'd like to you know, go for drinks or uh, something to eat. Um, they do have a small dock, however, they're limited. There's often, uh, on a weekend, those docks will be filled to capacity, but they often have a launch service. If you drop anchor just across from the restaurants, 
in this general area, and this here is a little cove that has deep water, um, you're able to set anchor in uh, it's a pretty good holding all around this area. Just make sure you're out of the channel. And you could call the launch that's uh, located over by the restaurant. And uh, I do not remember the channel, but uh, if you call them, they will come over with their dinghy, pick you up on your boat, and ferry you back and forth to the restaurant. Um, it's common. It happens all the time, and uh, many boats do that on a regular basis. If you do drop anchor in this deep water off of, uh, across from the Proving Ground restaurants, uh, it's very easy to take a dinghy over to the beach. It's a short trip. And this entire area here called Plum Island is a popular area where people stop and uh, set up chairs on the beach. You can walk through the trails and just across the road that goes through Sandy Hook is the actual public beach, Sandy Hook Beach, right on, on this side, on the ocean side. So that's a nice place to visit. It's probably about a quarter mile walk from the water. Um, there are some locations where you could tie up your dinghy, uh, some trees along the shore that you could secure it. There are several gas docks along the way. There is one right next to the Proven Ground restaurant at, uh, I believe it's Baker's Marina. There's a gas dock there. And a little further on the inlet, before you get to the bridge, there are several other marinas, a couple more gas docks, Shup's Landing, Bar's Landing. These are also restaurants. Um, Bar's is a, is a very nice restaurant to visit. Um, the dock and dine is usually at the gas dock, but they have a very large gas dock and usually can accommodate. You just need to speak to the attendant. Another thing I forgot to mention, Sandy Hook Point is a federal park, and it also houses some old uh, military installations, and uh, it was an old missile base. So it is a, a, an open museum, and there are a lot of areas that you could visit um, inside uh, the hook itself on the on the heart, on the land side so um, there's plenty of information on the internet and uh, plenty of walking paths that you could take if you wish to venture further south up the river past the bridge the river splits you have the Navasink River going west and the Shrewsbury River heading south if you head south there's several marinas and a couple restaurants along the shoreline the whole river goes back pretty far all the way to Monmouth with numerous marinas along the way. If you go west on the Navasink River, a nice place to stop for the day or even spend the night uh, is a little protected cove at this location that you could easily get to by following the channel in and then past buoy 10. Following the charts, staying in the deep water, you could head all the way up to this point. Uh, you just, uh, just across from a pier, and there's a, a state park in this area here. You take a dinghy over to the pier, and there's a small beach, and it's a nice walking, walking park in that area of Atlantic Highlands. And at low tide, you will have plenty of water where you're anchored in this hole here, but it gets very shallow quick here, and this sandbar it actually has a beach that comes out at low tide. So it's a nice place to dinghy up and uh, walk around the island there for the day. And keep in mind these rivers are tidal, so you will swing back and forth with the tide as it goes in and out of the rivers. Further up the Navasink River, you start heading into Rumson. There's a drawbridge at this point. Um, just inside of this bridge is a nice restaurant with lots of uh, dock. Uh, it's a fixed dock, uh, probably about 200 feet of fixed dock, and there's always space to pull in there. Uh, the only problem with it being a fixed dock, you need to account for those tides that go up and down. You're going to have uh, about 5-foot tide swing uh, or, or greater, depending on the moon. But um, this nice restaurant here called Salt Creek Grill, I highly recommend that. And just getting to it, make sure you follow the day markers in to the channel that's leading to the marina that's right next door and the Oceanic Marina, and then you have the restaurant pier at this location. A uh, really nice place to visit. You could keep going down the Navasink River all the way to uh, Red Bank, where there's it's a more of a city in this area. Um, you would need to dock uh, and pay for transient fees at any of these marinas. 
Um, you have some boat clubs. Irwin Marine is a nice marina that's very close to the city center within walking distance. I recommend that if you wish to go visit Red Bank, which has a number of uh, restaurants and bars and a lot of shops on the main street. So that's a nice place to visit also. So what are your other options when entering New York Harbor? If you don't want to go towards Sandy Hook, you have a few options. You could head towards the Brooklyn side, towards the northeast, and that takes you on the back side of Rockway Beach and on the south side of Coney Island. Now, Coney Island is a famous beach. I'm sure most people have heard about it, Coney Island, Nathan's, and all that. So it's a popular beach. Um, there's no real location here. You can pull your boat up. There are some fishing piers, but you need to stay far away from that. Further in, there's a marina. Just watch the low waters. Follow your charts. We have a marina just in Gateway Marina on the Brooklyn side. You could further go into the inlet, and now you're heading towards Jamaica Bay, which has a lot of different channels. You need to be very careful about the depth of the water. Same thing here. Uh, channels are not 100% marked. Um, you got some low water. I've run aground in here thinking I was on the right side of a buoy in the channel, and didn't, uh, that wasn't the case. But um, it's soft bottom in most cases, but be very careful. Just to, you know, stay within the channels. There are gas docks in this, low, this area here. Uh, there are gas docks when you come into Mill Basin. This is around Floyd Bennett Field. Now, this area here of Floyd Bennett Field, that's an old air base military air base. Um, it now houses, houses some Coast Guard and uh, New York Police Department aviation units, but there is uh, a small museum um, on the uh, Flappish Avenue side that you could visit. You'll, you may be able to take dinghies up to some old seaplane um, ramps and go walking around the park. However, some areas are restricted due to the, uh, the activity and the NYPD bases the Coast Guard, so you just be mindful of that. Uh, going into Mill Basin, you also have some restaurants and marinas. Sea Traveler's Boat Marina I used to be at that marina some years back, and there's also some restaurants. You have gas docks as you go further in. At the very end here is another marina, and uh, actually you're right off of Kings Plaza which is a mall if you need to go shopping. But no, uh, no dock and dine over there. You'll need to uh, pay for transient slips. So a lot of different places to go in Jamaica Bay, a lot of different places to explore. Way in the back of Jamaica Bay in this area uh, is JFK Airport. And um, very deep water in this area, and it's surprisingly not restricted. Um, I used to go back here and go water skiing uh, some years ago. Um, so, you know, it's a, if you wanted to come all the way into the back of the bay, you can sit here and watch planes take off and land, but uh, it's a good trip to make it back this direction. Another option you have when entering New York Harbor is to visit Great Kills Harbor over by Staten Island, which is in this area. Great Kills Harbor is a protected, very well protected harbor on the south end of Staten Island. Make sure you enter the channel from the south, do not cut it too soon as you got some low water to the east and to the west. There's a marker right at the entrance, Great Kills Light, and you follow the channel in from that point. There has been sh some shoaling over the years and they have relocated some of the buoys. Uh, this area was also hit very hard during Hurricane Sandy in 2012, so there has been some change to the uh, landscape. Once you enter the harbor, it's relatively deep water everywhere you go in this harbor with the exception of the very center. Um, it, it could get shallow in, low, in uh, low tide, so just be mindful of that. The entire harbor again is a mooring field of countless sailboats. Um, there are some wrecks that may still exist that were sunk over the years. Um, after Hurricane Sandy, this entire area was destroyed. I actually had a full video on that uh, as I lost my boat when it was docked over here at Great Kills Park Marina. 
Um, but uh, plenty of marinas for transient dockage. There are on the, I'll, I'll call it the west shore of the bay, um, several restaurants and some amenities, ship stores and uh, uh, bait and tackle stores. Um, however, there are no dock and dine facilities really here. You have to call the marinas and actually arrange for transient. Um, I'm not unsure if any give any type of, uh, you know, short stay for uh, transient dockage for dock and dine. So just call the marinas before heading in there. Um, there are two gas docks in Great Kills Marina, over by Mansion Marina, and then there's one at the end of the pier, which is not even showing at this point, but at Staten Island Yacht. Uh, yacht sales in the there's a gas dock at this location also and then you have Nichols Great Kills Park Marina is on the east shore the southeast shore I guess we would call it um, this is directly across from Great Kills Park this whole area here is a National Park Service concession also during the summer they have a concession stand here where you can purchase uh, you know lunch and, and drinks uh, mainly for beachgoers not the, the cleanest or nicest of beaches. This is New York Harbor. You're not going to find white sand beach here. Um, but uh, you do have a lot of fishermen that fish along this Crooks Point here. There are trails to walk all around and through here, but a nice place to walk around and visit. Uh, there's really not too many amenities at, at the, uh, the, the marina itself, at Nichols, Great Kills Harbor Marina. But um, it's a nice marina, all new docks. The entire uh, marina was rebuilt, but there's no, uh, not much of any amenities other than uh, a bathhouse. Towards the north end of Great Kills Harbor, there is a boat ramp in this location that's uh, very active on the weekends. Um, as I said, this is entire area here is, is a park. Uh, this whole par portion of uh, Great Kills Park right here. Um, lots of trails along the waterfront. So a nice place to visit on a nice sunny day. Moving up north into the Hudson River as you enter further into New York Harbor. The first bridge you come across is the Verrazano Narrows Bridge. It used to be one of the longest suspension bridges in America. I believe that is no longer the case, but it is a very nice bridge regardless. Um, as you enter this bridge on the left shoreline, you will see Fort Wadsworth which is uh, also a museum now. It's an old uh, fort that protected the harbor. Um, that You can do walking tours of those grounds. However, there's no facilities that I'm aware of that you could uh, dinghy up to this area. And uh, it's higher up on the shore, so I'm not sure if that's even, even possible to get to. You will come across many moored freighter, freighter ships, uh, tugboats, and a lot of commercial marine traffic in this area so just be mindful of that and give them plenty of right of way um, there's a lot of ferry service once you get to the northern end of Staten Island uh, this area here is the Staten Island ferry terminal and they have ferries going back and forth to Manhattan depending on the time of day about every half an hour or so going both directions so you're uh, you're guaranteed to see one of those bright yellow orange school bus looking ferry boats traveling back and forth from Manhattan to Staten Island Crossing the uh, harbor, as you start heading up towards the Hudson in Manhattan, you'll be, most notably, will be the Statue of Liberty, which would be at Liberty Island at this point. Uh, be careful as you're crossing. If you went over to Staten Island and you decide to cut across this direction here to the Statue of Liberty, a lot of boats make that trip. The water is very shallow at this point here. You have a fouling area, there's rocks, and it gets very shallow, and you're actually, when you're out on the water, it's hard to notice that. I actually ran aground on that, and I was in New York Harbor for many, many years. So uh, just be mindful of staying away from that area. There's plenty of deep water to get close enough to the Statue of Liberty to get some great pictures. Um, behind the Statue of Liberty, you're actually able to drop anchor and uh, you could spend some time back here as long as you stay out of the security zone. Again, white buoys mark the security zone. You cannot be on the inside of the island too close to the Statue of Liberty. So stay out of that security zone. But there's plenty of water on the backside where you could drop anchor, spend the night. You would have a great view 
of Lower Manhattan skyline and the Statue of Liberty as a backdrop. Uh, really nice place. You're relatively protected in that area also. Just north of the Statue of Liberty is Ellis Island, where uh, all the immigrants would first visit when they uh, came to the United States many, many years ago. I believe you could also get tours for both of these islands uh, if you get to the mainland, which is in, in Manhattan, but uh, we'll talk more about that in a little bit. At the lower tip of Manhattan, you will not miss it because you will see in this area here all of the high rises. You will see uh, World Financial Center. You will see the Liberty Tower, uh, World Trade Center location. That's all easily seen from the water. Um, this side here is this is the Hudson River, and to the east is the East River, which would take you around the backside of Manhattan. And if you wanted to go to Long Island Sound, this is the path you would take to head to the Long Island Sound. which is the north side of Long Island, between Connecticut and New York. So at this point, one of the few recreational marinas um, and gas docks, I would say, that are available here in New York Harbor is Liberty Landing, which is just around the backside of Statue of Liberty, Ellis Island. You'll see this inlet. It is marked by a channel. And there are ferry boats that come in and out of here, smaller uh, commuter ferries. In. But there's several marinas, and there is a gas stock or two that you could visit. There are several restaurants you could visit here. Uh, high-end high -end restaurants, there is a marina store. Um, other than that, there's not too many provisions that you could get on this side. But, um, you know, a nice place to visit. Liberty Landing Park is a nice area you could walk around to visit also in this area. Um, if you did want to visit Manhattan Island, there's uh, a few different options. You have here North Cove Marina, which is right at the World Financial Center. Um, there's no uh, dock and dine dockage per se here. You need to call ahead and actually uh, uh, reserve a slip for transient dockage. I have stayed there for a short two hours, and it, it cost nearly $100 just for the, uh, the short two-hour stay. Uh, usually you have larger mega, mega yachts at this location, but it is a great area to stop if you w really wanted to visit uh, the Ground Zero Memorial, Lower Manhattan, the World Financial Center has shopping, uh, and then everything else that Lower Manhattan has to offer is pretty much within walking distance, or uh, you could grab a cab or the subways from this point, and uh, you could go anywhere in New York City once you stop at North Cove Marina. Uh, there are marinas also on the New Jersey side, on the east shore of the Hudson. Um, I'm not too, fami too familiar with any of them, but if you need to stop, you just pull up that information. On the Manhattan side, you'll see some mooring fields. There's some sailing clubs uh, along the way, a lot of commercial piers, none of these that are open for uh, recreational dock and dine or uh, transient stops. Um, as you get further up, you'll pass... Uh, Chelsea Pier Marina, which you can't miss that. That's uh, also a full-service marina that, uh, for recreational boaters. Uh, it has a large golf driving range that you will see the netting for, and the red and white buildings of Chelsea Piers have uh, a number of shops and restaurants. Uh, again, no dock and dine. You would need to pay to keep your boat here even for, uh, for lunch for a couple hours. North of Chelsea Piers, you'll pass the the Intrepid, the USS Intrepid Sea, Air, and Space Museum, where you will see the U USS Aircraft Carrier Intrepid, and housed on the deck of the Intrepid is the Space Shuttle Enterprise, which uh, you're unable to see. They have it covered by a uh, structure of some por some sort. Um, again, this is a security zone. You need you cannot get too close to these piers. I don't believe it is marked, but do not go in between the piers. They frown on that. Police boats do patrol, and they will uh, chase you out, and maybe you get a fine if you get too close to the restricted area. But uh, a lot to see from the water side. Um, there's a Navy submarine that's also in this area, uh, the USS Growler, and uh, there's a lot of other planes, small craft, that are uh, on the pier itself and also on the deck of the aircraft carrier. Um, this is a great place to visit. Um, 
if you'd like to spend the day walking around the inside of the Intrepid, uh, some really nice uh, time you're going to be spent there, a lot to learn. Um, however, getting there, uh, docking, it's going to be expensive. You're going to be spending some money for transient dockage and then, uh, of course, the entrance fees getting into the Intrepid Museum. Traveling north on the Hudson, you'll notice that the buildings start to get not as tall. You start to see a little, a few more trees. Um, you do pass the 79th Street Boat Basin, which is a marina that you could also make reservations at. As you get further up north, you'll come to the George Washington Bridge, which is another large bridge uh, connecting New Jersey to Manhattan. And once you pass the George Washington Bridge, the scenery starts to change. You start to see the bluffs of the Palisades on the New Jersey side. There are You start to see some marinas. You have Englewood Boat Basin on the New Jersey side is a, is a recreational marina that you could visit. On um, the very northern tip of Manhattan, uh, there's the inlet. There's a uh, train bridge here and an inlet that goes around the Harlem River, it goes around the tip of Manhattan. And this could be a shortcut from the Hudson if you wanted to go back to the East River and to the Long Island Sound. Uh, it's all deep water. Uh, the only problem would be the railroad bridge and some of these other bridges that have pretty tall vertical clearance, but uh, the bridges do open if you need, uh, you know, this is 25 feet, you got 30 feet here, so most boats could navigate this water. Uh, be careful at this point when you round the Harlem River and it starts meeting the East River. This area right here is called Hell's Gate. And uh, for good reason, the water currents here are could be treacherous. Uh, I've seen tugboats pulling barges uh, that were sideways to the uh, towing vessel. So uh, be very careful with the currents in this area, uh, depending on the tide. You have currents coming in from the Long Island Sound, the ocean up the East River, and then the Hudson River uh, is connected to the north through the Harlem River. That concludes this segment of the video from Point Pleasant, New Jersey to Manhattan Island in New York. In our upcoming videos, we'll be traveling further north on the Hudson all the way up to Albany. So stick around and like and subscribe. And if you have any suggestions or questions, please leave them in the comments section. Thanks for watching.